today I'm going to show you how to build this DIY solar generator. The 18650, probably one of the most popular battery cells in the world. In a single form, you can't do much with it. You have to build it into a battery pack of higher voltage to do any real work. Now, there's many ways to do that. But this I, I came up with this. This is a printed circuit board that uses Hold push and cell holders that allow you to load batteries just like we used to into our TV remote control. I started offering it in a kit form, just a bunch of parts that you have to solder together. Then, in time, I started offering them in populated form. This is a BMS, a battery management system that goes along with the battery module. I've been working on this for a couple of years and finally, after all this time, I am able to present to you this. This right here is a modular 7S 24 volt battery pack ready to be used. Using a multimeter, you will see that it outputs 24 volts at these two points. So what's the big deal you say? Well, this allows you to very easily make everything from a small battery pack all the way to this large system. This is a 20 kilowatt hour DIY battery system that can power an entire building. So just how easy is it to build a system using these? Well, let's build one. You start with one module. These little guys are brass standoffs, 25 millimeter long, and these are used to put the entire assembly together. They also electrically pass the power from one board to the next. Right at the bottom, you start with these nylon plastic standoffs because these are also isolators. You can isolate the bottom of these boards so nothing shorts. You start the board like this. You add a second one on top. And by doing that, you've connected, electrically connected these two boards. These ship with brand new cells. They are available with LG M36 cells and NCR 18650B cells. You have a choice, 3,500 milliamp hours or 3,400 milliamp hours capable of five amp continuous. The cells ship in factory packaging at 30% state of charge. So these are all exactly the same voltage and very close in capacity. Once you add another board, you use four standoffs to secure it. Now to tighten them, you have to use a tool like this, sort of like a screwdriver or something small like that. Nothing too big, don't use power tools, only hand tighten. You can easily over tighten them, so don't do it. Then after that, add another board. These boards are highly modular, so you can connect them in many different ways. Like this one here, for example, has an XT60 connector, and you can also use a straight connector. You can use screw terminals or also solder cable leads. Today, we're going to build a 10 module battery pack, and we are going to connect it using an XT90 pigtail with ring terminals. Add the connector to the middle of the pack. We have five modules here, and we are going to add five more. So now we add this cable right here. These markings on the board here, this is positive and this is negative. Add another board. Four more standoffs. Another board. The last board, you have to use these nylon standoffs. Female threads on both sides. Again, don't over tighten them. The reason we're using this is again to isolate the battery pack from the outside of our enclosure. Okay, right here, we now have a 10 module battery pack, essentially 10 individual battery packs connected in parallel. 7S or seven cells in series, 10 cells in parallel. And the reason we do that is because we have to bring the voltage up. Each cell is 3.7 volts nominal, but, but to achieve the level of work that we need out of these, they have to be around 24 volts. So the final step is to install the ribbon cable designed to connect all the modules together. It connects cell one of board one into cell one of board two and cell one of board three and so on and so on. It will connect all the cells number two on all 10 boards together and so on. Seven groups of cells, no matter how many boards you stack together.
Once you finish doing this, this becomes one battery pack system known as a 7S 10P. You've made a 900 watt hour battery pack, 24 volt, which is relatively safe, low voltage level. You can't get electrocuted, but you do have to be careful as this is capable of 1C continuous power output. That's the equivalent of one capacity or about 900 watts, or in other words, about 50 amps. So what else do we need to do to this? We need to install a battery management system. This is a must to keep the battery system healthy and safe. It is basically a smart switch that monitors each individual cell group for voltage. And if any of them drift from each other, then it steps in and attempts to balance them. This switch will turn off if it's not capable of balancing the groups or if the cells get too low or too high in voltage. It is an essential safety device. So to install this, we will need to bring the case for our battery. This box is arranged in what I commonly call a DIY solar generator. It's basically a large power pack, a box that can encase the battery. It's got a few connections like these USB ports here. It's got a voltage meter and then two jumbo terminals to serve full 24 volt power into devices like inverters and other 24 volt appliances. So this right here is not that important. It's very, very simple. It's got a solar charge controller. Uh, it's got the BMS system that we have in there. Uh, and then it's got a meter solar plug, right? This is where you would plug in your solar panels. A switch to turn on the meter and the USB ports in here so that doesn't run your battery down. So the way you install that, you just drop it in here. and four screws. I've pre-drilled four holes on the edges of this case. This is a Pelican case, by the way. The last thing to do here is connect the battery pack here that is unprotected to the BMS. And you do that by connecting this XT90 connector. Then, connect the ribbon cable. So that one I haven't made, so I will have to crimp those and make an extension that goes from here to here. Let's do that now. Okay, so the, so the very first time that you connect this, you'd have to disconnect it. And then connect it again, and then the power turns on. So now this BMS is on. The MOSFETs, the transistors in here have turned themselves on. Now they're sending power to the solar charge controller and then the solar charge controller is eventually going to send power into our load here. Our loads are these ports here, right? The low power ports. The high power ports, these ones, these are uh, these are connected now. Those are direct. Okay, when you install this, you got to put it on mode dash. And then when you put it on dash mode, you can turn the load on and off. All the other modes are so that uh, the load turns off after the sun comes out. This is for like a little street light. It's got some features for that, but we're not using it like that. So you just put it on dash then when you connect the solar panel in here it'll just charge the batteries and then the load stays on the entire time but because we don't want that battery to run right low then you we have our own switch that we put in here so when you turn it on it shows you the voltage and then also turns these guys on in fact let's test that right now turn it on there we go now it's charging it's, it's fully charged but now it recognizes that there is power. So there you go, that's how easy it is to build battery systems using my populated and loaded board. These are available at Jack 35, and this by far, well, I mean, you know, I'm biased, but by far is the easiest way to build battery systems. Just shy of one kilowatt hour, and we put it together 
like in half hour, right? Yes, I know, I pre-build the box and all this other stuff, but that's not important. You can choose other boxes, you can choose other components, you can go really fancy and put all kinds of meters. This one is just very simple, right? And the simpler it is, the more reliable it is. That's what I've learned through the years, so that's why I'm making these very, very simple these days. Even though it's not that important which components I ended up using for this particular uh, solar charge controller, if you're interested in building this particular version of a solar uh, power pack, then I will have the links in the description of this video. The whole list of building materials will be down there with links to Amazon to where you can order all this stuff and you can build your own. There you go, a simple power pack. If you're interested in winning this pack, just like and comment on this video. I will pick a random comment as the winner a week after this video goes live. As always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the video announcing the winner. Bye.